In this course, you will learn how you can create a PDF question and answer system completely from scratch that runs on your local PC. The idea behind this course is that you won't be an expert AI engineer yet, but you will understand how different components play together to create a full AI system. In this course, the most important thing is that you can follow along with me. You don't have to necessarily understand each component in detail yet, but you will understand which components interest you the most. Perhaps you're interested in further building out the front end or the back end or the data handling part of the system. So let's just get started. The first step that everyone has to follow is installing Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop is how we are going to be running all of the different modules on our local PC in different components. In this case, they're called containers. So what we're going to do is download Docker Desktop, and the instructions are different on an operating system level. In my case, I'm going to download Docker Desktop for Mac. Now, once Docker is done downloading, you probably have to go to your Downloads folder and find it. So in my case, you can see it's being downloaded right here. And there we go. We've got the Docker DMG file. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And then all I have to do on Mac is just drag and drop Docker. So what you need to download next are, of course, the AI course resources, which you can find inside of the course module. So the AI course is a zip file, and I'm just going to unzip it right now. And you can then open the AI course folder with any editor if you're liking. But I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. So it's probably easiest if you did it as well, so you can follow along with me. But feel free to use any other editor that you like. So I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. And I actually already opened the folder in here. So you will see that you have the models folder as well as different folders for each module. Right now you are in module one, but you can see which folder you have to open by just checking out what my user interface looks like when you're going through the entire course. But for this part, you just have to focus on module one. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse these other modules. Now, before we head into the code, I want to give you a high level idea of the goal of this module. In this module, we are going to be running an AI model locally on your PC, a AI model called a large language model, which is similar to something like ChatGPT or Claude Anthropic, which allows you to get text outputs based on a user input, like a question. Now, the main thing to understand here is that, of course, if we're going to be running it locally on our PC, we're not going to have a model that's as strong as these frontier models. But it will be quite capable, especially in this proof of concept phase that we're in right now. So we don't even need an expensive GPU for this because we're going to be using a relatively small language model. Let's first see what model we're going to be using and where it is defined. So if we open the models folder here, we can find that there's this file called 53.5 mini instruct. This is a very small, large language model created by Microsoft. And this is actually a specific version published by Bartowski, which is a little bit more compatible with lower end machines. This is a model of a format GGUF. And these are some technical details that you don't have to be aware of right now. It's mainly important to understand that this YAML file defines what model to use and certain parameters which are important to make sure that the model runs well on a small, pretty simple machine. Now, you don't have to change this YAML file yourself at the moment, and I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information. So let's first get an idea of how this YAML file is actually used. And this YAML file is actually used in our Docker Compose file. A Docker Compose file allows you to define multiple services that are going to be running on your PC locally. And the nice part about Docker is that you can really isolate these services properly. You can make sure that, for example, certain services are working on a isolated network or that you have specific rules set up for how these services communicate to each other. The great part about this is that if you have a setup that works locally with Docker, you can also deploy it to a cloud provider where you can actually make sure that all of this runs in a production setting. So it's a great tool to learn. Now, this Docker Compose file currently is defining two services. First of all, we have this local AI service. And local AI is a great service that exposes large language models as well as other AI services on your local PC. What we're doing here is we are mapping the port 8080 of the local AI service to our own localhost port 8080. And this means that other services on your local PC will be able to call this local AI service. Now, you might not be familiar yet with how APIs work. We're actually going to be creating an API from scratch later on in the course, but it's good to understand that this is effectively an API that has been developed for us. And the only thing we have to do in this case is actually provide a model definition file. So that's actually what we're doing here with volumes. We are mapping our models folder 
to the models folder that the local AI container will have access to. And what's important to understand there is that it will read all of the YAML files in that folder automatically, but it will also actually store the downloaded language models in this folder. And that's important because it means that when we restart the service, it doesn't have to re-download the AI model, which is quite convenient because these models are usually gigabytes in size. So we only have to download it once. Then we have what's called a health check. So once this container starts up, we need to make sure that it's actually healthy. So Docker as a external service will actually call this endpoint here and see if the endpoint is actually available and returns a response. If it does, it knows that the service is healthy. Now we actually have a second service, a client service, because while it's nice to have this AI model hosted locally, we need something to actually call the model, right? So this is a client service that's created from a Docker file. So whereas we're using this local AI container that was created by the community before, we're actually going to be building our own client service with a predefined Docker file that's in the module folder. So the Docker file can be found in here. And if we open it, we can actually see that it seems to be a Python application because the first line in this file says from Python 3.12 slim. So it actually starts with a base image that already has Python installed. From there, it installs all of the requirements for the application and it runs Python client.py. So we actually have a client file that's already predefined in this module folder. And we're gonna open it up here, client.py. Now, this is quite a big file already, and I'm gonna walk you through it very carefully, but only once we have actually run this module as a whole, because it's important to understand what the module does in practice, and then I can explain to you how the Python code actually works. So it's just enough at the moment to know that this Python file is here, and this client file is actually used in this client service. So then we have some environment variables, and we define that the LLM API base is local AI 8080. And the reason why this works is because when you define multiple services in Docker Compose, it will actually create a network of these services and you can call the services by their service name. So in this case, local AI is actually the name of this service, which means that this client service is able to call local AI just by referencing its name. Very convenient. And you can see here too, that it does actually map that port as well. Now, it does depend on the local AI being healthy. So this is another great thing about Docker. You can make different services wait on each other to make sure that they're up and running before they get called. So this is all brain in theory, but what does this actually look like when we try to get it running? Well, let's actually open up a terminal. In my case, I'm going to do that by browsing to terminal, new terminal, and then I'm just gonna make some room for it. So I'm just gonna scroll this down, all right. And then if I type ls in here, you can see that I've actually got these files right here. So I'm already in the right folder. If you're opening your terminal somewhere else, just make sure that you are browsing to this module one folder. And what we have to do now is we have to run docker compose up. And I'm going to do dash dash build to make sure that I rebuild the containers because I might have done it in the past and I just want to make sure that I start off with a clean build. When I run this command, it's going to pull the local AI container because as I said before, we're actually using a container that's been predefined. And you can see that that is a couple of gigabytes in size. So depending on your network speed, this might take a while, but when you restart the service later on, it won't have to do this again. So the download of this container is pretty much finished. Ah, and there you go. It printed out a lot of different messages. So I just wanna walk you through what actually happens now. So it finished building that container and then it actually starts up that service. Now, when this local AI service is getting started, it actually needs to download that large language model because again, this is the first time I'm starting up the application, so the model has not been downloaded yet. There is a lot of messages here, but most of them you can ignore, including these warnings. It is important though that you verify that what happens now is that it's preloading models from this models folder. So again, it's mapped this models folder to that container and it can read out this YAML definition. So based on that, it understands that it needs to download this 5.3.5 mini model 
from Hugging Face, which is a repository for machine learning models. And then eventually you can see that the model has been downloaded and verified. Now I have pretty fast internet. So for me, this was done very quickly, but this could take a little bit of time for you. Now, what you will see in the models folder now is that there's a new actual folder called Bartowski, which was created automatically. If I open this up, you will see that there is a 5.3.5 mini instruct GG web files. So this is a file of three gigabytes, and this is the entire AI model that we're going to be running throughout the course. So with a little bit of patience, you should eventually see that client one is starting to output some logs in the terminal. Local AI streaming client demo, testing connection to local AI and demonstrating base capabilities. It starts to print out the available model. So clearly this client code seems to be calling the local AI service because it knows that we've got this 5.3.5 mini model available to us. And then there seems to be some kind of output here, right? DevOps is a set of practices that combine software development and IT operations to automate security, application infrastructure, and package delivery processes, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this output is actually your very first output from the locally running AI model. And maybe your output looks slightly different because AI models are not very deterministic. They usually return different answers even if the same question has been asked. Now, how exactly did this answer come to life? What actually caused this client code to get this answer from the AI model? Well, for that, we have to take a little look at the client PY file that again was used in this Docker file to create the client service. So if we go to client PY, we can actually see a lot of code. If I scroll down here, you can see that this is over 100 lines of code. And we are going to get into more details as to how the code works a little bit later. But for now, I want you to understand how this code was calling this local AI model and why it gave us this explanation of DevOps. So there is this method here on line 74 called demonstrate capabilities. And here you can see those print statements that we actually saw in our logs, right? So print available models, you can see that that's coming in our terminal here and it lists the models available in the AI service. And it does that by calling list models and calling this slash models endpoint. This is actually similar to how in the Docker Compose file, this exact same endpoint is being checked to make sure that the local AI service is running. And so it's calling this endpoint on the local AI service, and it knows then that it can actually call the 5.3.5 mini model. So how exactly does it call this model? Well, if we go back to the demonstrate capabilities method, you can see here that we have an examples array. So we have one example of a chat that it basically is passing to the model to get an answer to the user's question of what is DevOps in one sentence? And so that is what was actually passing the AI model. And that is why the answer that we see in the terminal is actually this bit about explaining what DevOps means. So if you want to play around with this, you can actually change the example here. So let's actually change this to AI explanation. What is AI in one sentence? And now if you want to actually test this new question, what you can do is go to your terminal, do control C or the equivalent for your operating system, and then you will exit out of the Docker container. Now what I can do is I can restart the containers because quitting out of a Docker compose command usually stops the running containers as well, which is great in this case because I want to restart them. But the important part here is that if I restart them without rebuilding the containers, you will not actually see that this new question is going to be answered. There you go. It's still answering with this answer about DevOps. So why is that? Well, when we created the containers with the Docker Compose command, we are basically creating a container out of whatever definition we have in Docker Compose. And that means that unless we explicitly ask Docker to recreate the containers, it will not rerun the steps in this Docker file, for example, and use the updated client code. So in this case, I actually have to run Docker Compose up but explicitly add dash dash build to make sure that those containers get built from scratch. And now it will actually create new containers with the new client Python code. And if we wait just a little bit, you will see that now the AI model actually answers our question about AI. There you go. AI stands for artificial intelligence, et cetera, et cetera. 
So we've kind of demystified here how this client code is calling the AI model, but clearly this is very inconvenient, right? If I want to ask something else, I have to change the Python code in here, rebuild the containers. Surely that's not how it works in production, and it doesn't. By the end of this course, you will have an actual front end where you can ask any questions you want, and it will pass that along to the AI model. But we're just getting started here, and it's just important to have a robust client that asks an example question to understand how this AI model is being called. I actually want to resolve a bigger problem that we have at the moment. And that's the fact that this answer is not going to be given to you unless it's fully generated. The problem there is that you might have to wait quite a long time before you get the answer. Let me illustrate this. I'm just going to exit out of the container and I'm going to start it up again without the build command. Now, in my case, the AI model actually loads in pretty quickly, but you don't actually see anything being logged about the answer until it's fully done generating. There you go. I had to wait 13 seconds for this full response to come in. And only now is it printed in the terminal. But if you've used any AI system like ChatGPT, you know that this is not really how it works. You want to get the answer as it streams in. So in summary, we have two issues here. First of all, we have to keep changing the Python code and rebuild the container to ask any different question to the AI system. Super inconvenient. And the second issue is that in this terminal session, the answer is only printed out once it has been fully generated by the model, which is super inconvenient and not how real AI systems work like ChatGPT. What we're going to be doing is we're first going to be working together to make the answers stream in as they are generated by the model. And then in later modules, we're going to be resolving the other blocker of not being dependent on static Python code to call the AI model in a very specific way. We'll be creating an API so that you can ask any question you want without having to restart the service. So there's a lot of things that we have to do, but I hope to see you in the next section where we're going to be tackling the streaming responses first.